Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart and in this video we're going to look at some BGE level basic equations. Now these will probably be second level and there's more than one method um, possible here but I'm going to teach you in the balancing method. So if this isn't the way you've been shown you might like it as an alternative or you might have to maybe look at other ways of doing it. So I like to always start by the equations and think of the old fashioned set of scales that um, if you had to make things balance, you put the exact same weight on either side. And if you took something off one side, it would fly up and the other side would go down. So to make it balance, you would then take something off that weight to make them match. Or similarly, if you put something on one side, you did to the other. So what I've got is a picture of a set of scales here to kind of illustrate what's going on. And on one side of the scales, I have um, an A plus 9. And on the other side, I've got a 14. Now, what we're really doing here is solving an equation it says a plus 9 equals 14. And I fully appreciate that a lot of people can just look at this and say, oh, the missing number is 5. But what's really happening there is you know that because you've been told all your number bonds and your number theory from primary school about numbers add to give you whatever. But what we're trying to do is show you a method that will work even when the numbers become so much more complicated that you can't just look at it and know the answer. So what we do is we have to remove something from both sides to keep the scales balanced. So that's what I'm saying there. Now, although I've said remove, sometimes we need to add things on, but we'll come to that later. So we're solving equations. The goal in any equation is to find out what A is. And to do that, you have to isolate A on its side. So A needs to be on its own. So if we're looking at this, the thing that's in the way is this plus 9. Or if I look at my set of scales, it's the plus 9 that's there. So to counteract that plus 9, what you have to do is you have to think, well, to get that plus 9, well, we're having to take away 9 from that set of scales. And to stop the scales becoming imbalanced, you also have to take away 9 from that set of scales. And 14 take away 9 leaves us with 5. So in terms of writing out the equation and the working on the equation, what I do is I get pupils to write a little, take away 9 and I take away 9 under the numbers. And then the actual line of working would be A equals 5. Okay. Now the important thing with equations is we always work down the way. There is no equal signs out the front like this. That's really bad form. The equations always run down the middle. And you must write A equals. It's not it's not enough to just write um that you think 5 plus 9 equals 14. Yeah, you've solved the number, but you haven't solved the equation the right way. So remember, we are giving you the basic skills here, the bottom line skills of algebra. And then we'll keep adding things in and making these a bit more complicated. So please don't write it like that. We want to see the answer A equals 5. Let's have a look at another one. So in this one, we're solving the equation C plus 6 equals 13. Okay. So I've got it illustrated over in my set of scales here as well. So we need to get rid of this plus 6. So to do that, we have to take away 6 from that scale and we have to take away 6 from that scale. So essentially, we're doing 13 take away 6, which we all know is 7. So the answer we get is C equals 7. So just to illustrate the working on the equation, we're taking away 6 from each side. And then we get the answer C equals 7. Now, what happens if it's not a plus number? The same kind of thing. The rule is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. So your aim is to get x on its own here. Now, x isn't really great in this phone. x should always look like a little algebra x like that. So a forward c e and a backward c or like a little twisty x, not like a time sign. So we have to deal with this minus 5 on this equation. So to try and get that x on its own, what we have to do is we have to add 5 because minus 5 and plus 5 would become 0, and that would essentially make it disappear. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to eliminate this minus 5 on the left-hand side. So we're adding 5, sorry, we're adding 5 to the left, so you must do the exact same to the other side to keep it balanced. So we add 5 to each side, 13 plus 5 becomes 18. So if I'm doing my equation, let's go to the left-hand side, I will be doing add 5 to each side. And then my answer would be x equals 18. Because it's really, really simple to look at this question and accidentally say it's 8. But a quick check will always prove your answer's correct. If you think 18 is the right number, go back to this line here and try doing 18 take away 5. If your answer equals what's on the right-hand side, you know you've got the equation right. So that's a nice thing about equations. You can always check your answer, but we don't always tell you that you can do that. Let's have a look at this one. So again, we've got a takeaway. So to counteract that takeaway 7, we need to add 7 to each side. 
So add seven to each scale. So for my working for the equation, it would be, oops, I don't know what's going wrong there. It would be plus seven, plus seven, and then this would give us A equals the answer of 17. And 17 take away 7 is 10. So basically what people soon spot is if this is a minus in here, you do an add. So you're always doing the opposite. Or if you had a plus in here, let's just do this x to example. If it's a plus 7 you see, you're doing the opposite and you're taking away 7 from each side. So you're doing the opposite of what you see um, to eliminate the number that is there to solve for A. So what you can do at this point is you can pause the video and you can try six of these questions for yourself. And then when you unpause the video, the answers will appear. Like magic, there they are. And I've also put the working in underneath of what we're doing. So hopefully you get the answers for those ones. Now, what I haven't done at this point is I haven't done any with negative numbers. These still could have negative numbers, but only providing if you've seen the topic of integers and negative numbers so far. If you're one of my pupils, you will have done. But if you're watching from a different school, you might not have seen negative numbers yet. So you maybe want to miss those ones out. Right, we're going to look at the second type of basic equations. This time, they look a little bit different. So I've got 2b equals 8. And the only way I could add, illustrate this one is I've used a little weight. Because that's what people associate with these scales. So I've got two weights that equal 8. Now, if I take away one of those scales, I've essentially halved the number of weights on that side to get to one weight. So if I'm halving the weight on that side, or the quantity on that side, I also have to half the quantity on the other side, which gives me four. So that means that one of those little weights is four. And again, lots of people will just look at that and go, oh, two weights are eight, or well, one of them's four. But mathematically, what we're doing, we're doing the balancing equation method. So whatever you do to the left, you do the same to the right. So to eliminate what's called basically this 2b, is you're dividing by that number, so what we're doing to each side here is we're dividing by 2 on each side, which leaves us with b equals 4. Now, another way to look at this one, which I sometimes let pupils away with without having to write the little divides, is I ask them, 2 times what is 8? And then you can tell me that it's 4. So 2 times what is 8? And then you can just go straight to, well, 2 times 4 is 8, so b equals the number 4. But using the balancing method, I'm just illustrating again, whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. Here's my second one. So I've got three little weights this time, each equal 21. So to find the value of one weight, I'm going to have to third or divide by three for the number of uh, weights. I'm going to have to do the same to the other side. So we're dividing by three on this one and 21 divided by three is seven. Okay, so again, there's your connection. There's the number three. You're dividing by that number. Now, some of these are straightforward, but they don't always give you a nice number and they don't always give you a positive number. So in this one, I've got 5y equals negative 30. So we need to find out what 1y is. So we're dividing by 5 on each side. Or again, asking yourself, well, 5 times what is 30? Well, we know it's 6. So y must be 6. However, I've got a negative number there. So remember, if you've got one positive and one negative number, negative will always win the fight. So it'll end up as y equals negative 6. And then this set, next one, a lot of the times, and maybe if you're doing this in first year or second year, I would say, oh, it should always be a nice number. But eventually down the line in algebra, it's not always a nice number. So I need to prepare you for that eventuality. If the number doesn't divide by the number in front, for example, in this one, I'm going to divide by 8. If it doesn't divide by 8, you've got two options. You can go check your work in and see if you've not made a tiny little mistake that this wasn't maybe a 16. Or you just leave it as a, div a fraction. Now, any fraction in maths would be 15 divided by 8 written that way. And that doesn't simplify at all. So there's your final answer. And that's perfectly acceptable. And you'll see them as equations get more complicated down the line. So just in case, I need to show you ones that doesn't always work out as a nice answer. Now, there are ones that work out slightly nicer by being called what are like nice decimals. Now, this one here is a rookie mistake that's made in, even in my higher class just now. We have to divide by the number in front of the letter. At first glance, a lot of people will want to tell me the answer here is 2. But then if eight is number, if y is the number 2, 8 times 2 would be 16. So that doesn't actually work. The answer can't be 2. So what is it then? Remember what we said. If you want y in its own, so you need to counteract that times by 8. Because that says 8 times y at the minute. So we divide by 8. And 4 doesn't divide by 8, so we're going to do it as a fraction. But what you might notice is 4 over 8 does simplify. 
whereas my last one, 15 over 8, didn't. This one does, because they're both in the four times table. That would be a half. So please don't fall into the trap of saying two in that one. That The number on the left is bigger, so it's not going to divide nicely. You can't share four sweets be among eight people. And then on this one here, we're going to counteract the times six. So we're going to divide each side by six. And again, it doesn't divide exactly. So we start with a fraction. Check that that simplifies. It does actually because we're in the three times table. And it would go down to seven over two. Or you might want to write that one as 3.5 or three and a half. So there's three different possible answers here. I don't mind. Personally, I would probably just leave it as a fraction unless I was then going on to do something with this. So that's me covered the next type of basic equations. Again, this is the point you might want to pause the video and check your answers. Just be aware I don't have any negative ones on this slide, but I will have negatives in my next lesson. And then if you unpause the video, there are your answers. So there are a couple of tricky ones that become um, simplified fractions or decimals. So I hope this has helped with basic equations. Come back and look for my second video on how to solve these with two steps, which is when I put these two styles of equations together. And again, we'll still be using the balancing method. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped.